Why would a three-time Super Bowl champion from the Dallas Cowboys be interested in aligning with the CF? This was a question I had when I heard that Clayton Holmes was wanting to not only use the ASEA, but share it with others. And so I asked him to come sit down, have an interview with me so that we could understand, you know, not only how ASEA weaves into his life, but also what it's taken for him to be great physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Um, this conversation was incredibly deep, deeply insightful, I think, for his own journey, but also for each of us on this human journey of realizing, you know, the gifts that life is offering us at every turn. And, you know, Clayton is just a beautiful soul. He's wanting to help others on their journey of healing. And he shares what Asiya has done for him on a physical level, but also why now it's aligning with him in his life's purpose and this mission to better others' lives, to be a force for good in the world, to wake other people up, to be a truth seeker and teacher. And so I cannot wait for you to enjoy this. I hope you do as much as I did. Uh, if you have any questions, you want to ask him anything, please do so in the comments. He will be responding. And if you want to reach out and get involved with Asiya through Clayton, just message me on that number in the description and we'd love to get you started. Well, welcome Clayton to the channel. I'm so excited to talk with you guys. Clayton Holmes is a three time Super Bowl champion of the Dallas Cowboys. He is a truth seeker and speaker. Uh, he stands for love. He stands for peace. He stands for deeper understanding. And recently, Asiya came across his path and he has resonated with it deeply for what it's doing to transform his health, but also with the mission to help change other people's lives, to be a force for good in the world. And so I wanted to bring him on here so you could gain some insight and understanding from him. Uh, Clayton, I am so excited, like beyond excited to be talking to you. And uh, I wanna just say welcome and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I'm excited to be here and for this reason. So yeah, I'm just tingling, Danielle. Thank you <laughs> Me too. We both <laughs> had like goosebumps going before this call. So it, I know it's going to be a good one, guys. So uh, get, get yourself some water, sit down, like we're going to have a nice conversation here. Um, I think something that, you know, I love about your story is, you know, it's not all just glamour and fabulous and like, oh, you know, I, I reached the pinnacle of my career and then the next thing happened and the next thing happened. Like you have gone through some pretty intense things. Um, you have, you know, hit the highest of the highs and the lowest of the lows. And there's a concept that I really love to talk about, which is the concept of post-traumatic growth, which is using the things that have really been the most traumatic in your life as fuel, uh, as fuel to grow. And so I think as we kind of go through, you know, your journey and all of the learnings that you've had that we're going to share with everyone, I think that's a theme uh, that I see in your life. And I think I resonate with you so much because it's been a theme in my own, but Let's dive into, you know, growing up, what got you into football in the first place? What was it <laughs> that made you want to get out on the field and, you know, perform at a high level as an athlete? Peer pressure got me involved, <clears throat> excuse me, with football because I started out playing baseball. Baseball was okay. my first love. I didn't want to play football because I didn't enjoy getting tackled. But yeah. like I said, <laughs> it was peer pressure and, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I joined the football team, didn't know what I was doing. And the, the most powerful thing that I have always had is that I am very coachable. Mm -hmm. And if the coach is good, I'm going to be great. So all I used to do, if the coach, I look at the coach, he'd tell me to do something. I go out there and do exactly what he said. That's, that's just, and that's how I got into football, peer pressure. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Being coachable is everything in life. You know, I think that speaks to being able to like put your own ego aside, right? And realize mm -hmm. and humble yourself. Like sometimes people know better than myself and, mm -hmm. and they can guide me and, and make me great. So mm -hmm. talk about what it was like, you know, in your journey uh, into the professional space and, you know, getting on there with the, with the Dallas Cowboys. That was absolutely amazing. I remember the first day, because I went to an NAIA school. I went to Carson Newman. <clears throat> NAIA and I got drafted the second pick in the third round so huh. I graduated with a group of guys like Kevin Smith, Darren Woodson, uh, Ashley Ambrose those were the guys that played the same <clears throat> excuse me position that I played so I couldn't wait to get around those guys and so you know the first day of camp you know we go in and we do our testing which is speed and agility to see how strong and fast you are and I again I looked up to these guys but when I got there and realize that, man, I'm, I'm, I'm with the elite. I'm, I'm with my, my group of people. Yeah. Like, so just to, it, 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 and it went from, from there to, um, 
bettering my work ethic because I thought I was working out going to an NAIA school, but when I got around those guys, it's just it's just great being around greatness, the people that are achievers and are, are just seeking greatness. It's just great to be around that. Oh, I can only imagine. And I mean, of course, physically, right? I'm sure going to the gym and like you just kind of upped what that looked like, but talk about like mentally, emotionally, because that's a totally different game to be in, <laughs> uh, to be around people that are just like, you know, you go from being a big fish in a small pond <laughs> to, mm -hmm. uh, to one where like, wow, there's a lot of people that are even, even better than me. And how did you work with that and uh, the pressures that come along with a situation like that? I am glad you brought that up, Danielle. I can't remember times in high school and college where I was just like, like, you know, I got tired, but I was just like dead tired. And I just felt like I wasn't going to catch my breath. But well, I'm with the Cowboys. And I, if, if we have conditioning, I'm leading in conditioning. I, I hustle. I don't slack around. I don't do things like that. Well, when you, when you turn, when you go pro, they give you a playbook this thick. It's, it's thick. You get yeah. a special teams playbook, so there's a lot of stuff that you have to learn. People yeah. don't, people, well, like me, I honestly thought, you know, you go practice, you watch the film when you go home. No, that's a business. That's work. We're there for eight to 12 hours. Wow. So we got these playbooks and I'm, again, I learn better from show and tell. Studying mm -hmm. wasn't my big deal. And so long story short with this story I'm explaining, I found myself like, I'm like, damn, I'm tired. It's like, why am I? I'm, and I'm working out. So I went and spoke to my strength coach. And he said, Clayton, he said, do you know that you can drain yourself physically, mentally? Uh -huh. And I was just like, he said, so are you studying? Are you doing more? And I was just like, damn, Mike. I was just like, yeah. So that was a whole, a whole nother adjustment for me to get used to. And before games, I would always, not in pros, I would always find me a quiet place for like, 30 or 40 minutes. I picked this habit up from my high school coach. It was my senior year in high school. Um, right before the bus was going to leave to go to the stadium, you know, we were sitting around with the guys, we laughing and talking. And my coach called me over. He said, Clay, he said, come here, son. He said, you got the physical part of the game down, but you need to learn the mental part. He said, go sit mm -hmm. somewhere by yourself and visualize yourself running our offense visualize yourself scoring a touchdown i'm getting chills now I'm thinking yeah. about this so i went and did exactly what he said daniel i went and i found me a quiet spot and i closed my eyes and next thing i know whoo, coach blew the whistle now i envisioned myself running touchdowns doing all kinds of things and daniel when i got on that field and i told you i i did some of the things that i, I was amazed so every before every game this is what i do now i find me a quiet spot away from everybody and do my get my preparation going but when i got to dallas I, there wasn't no quiet spot for me to get my stuff done it's yeah. it's oh god cameras it, i couldn't find me a quiet spot so i had to adjust it's a lot of things that i learned from football and how i behave and act so yes so that was a big adjustment yeah, I'm, I'm more of a you know look at film feel the person on the field but boy and, and we had to take tests every week. Oh, wow. There were, there were tests that they gave us. They call you up to the board in front of everybody. You have to do tests. So I was, I was wondering why I was getting tired. And Mike told me why. And that made sense to me. And yet Rex made, I was draining myself mentally. And it was showing up physically, too. Yeah. No kidding. I yeah. mean, there's only so much life force, right? Like <laughs> that, <laughs> I, I, prana, right? Your energy, your life force, it can get used up in the mind just as quickly. Uh, I remember yes. when I, when I first got my dog and I had to take him to training and he would be exhausted, like flat out <laughs> after training. And like, he wasn't running. It was just the sit, the stay, the like, that mental, um, yes. it, like it takes a lot of energy. So interesting to point out and um, talk to me about, so you now you're in the pros, you guys go to the Super Bowl not once, not twice, but three times you're in this space. Like what's it like at that level? Cause I mean, that's, that's the biggest stage uh, in sports. I mean, that is huge <laughs> outside of, I would say the Olympics. Um, what is that like for you? How did you handle the pressure, the fame, the recognition, all of that, like in your personal life and then both, you know, showing up fully on the field? Excuse me, that that feeling was absolutely amazing, but it wasn't what I was expecting it to be. Now, getting drafted to the Dallas Cowboys and I've never had like the big head or anything like that. 
but you can get spoiled in a city like Dallas. <laughs> Everything is free. They're taking care of you. You don't have to be in the back of the line, you, especially when you win those Super Bowls. So there's, you got to be really careful. There's a sense of arrogance that can come mm-hmm. along, but I did really well. Not saying I didn't have any, but I saw, I saw, <laughs> and it was just madness to get into that mind state. And then when you're young, you think that's going to last forever. And that type of thing uh, does it. But when we won the Super Bowl, th- that was an amazing feeling. But I set myself up for failure, for big accomplishments, because when I was 12 years old, I got I was enlightened and I didn't know it. I was transformed in the matter of a moment. I remember the day that I became an athlete. I remember it, Danielle. It was absolutely beautiful. So throughout my life, and whenever I achieve something big, I, I'm, dun, 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 I'm waiting for that next transformation kind of a thing. <laughs> and the uh-huh. transformation didn't happen. So we were riding back on the plane from the Super Bowl. And I just kind of woke up from my sleep and I looked around, everybody was still asleep. And I looked around, I said, damn. I said, is that it? I was like, shit. <laughs> I was like, shit. <laughs> that wasn't, that still something still was missing, Danielle. <laughs> something still was missing. So yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It's so funny. Isn't it interesting? Like, I I love that you share this because people think, oh, when I get this, I'll make it like, I'll feel great. I'll feel complete. Right. And then you get that thing, whether it's the new car, the new house, the new girlfriend, a kid, like whatever, winning the Super Bowl. And then all of a sudden, like you wake up, you know, next day, plane ride home. And it's like, oh, wait, there's still something missing. Like I'm still itching for more. Like there's still something else here. It is yeah. wild. Uh, absolutely wild. So talk to me about what happened in life, like post, post your career in football. Like, so obviously the physical body can only handle so much. Um, there is, there is an end to being a pro athlete. And what was it like for you when that ended and, and what happened next? Um, that ended abruptly. I didn't get a chance to really say goodbye to Mm -hmm. a game that I've been playing ever since I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. So the impact of that, the impact of how I left, I can, I can uh, call this what a lot of people refer to as hit rock bottom kind of thing. I've been down to rock bottom. And the thing that started me on that journey is when I was uh, playing professional football, I started smoking cannabis. Mm-hmm. and I had a positive test I had to go talk to the team psychiatrist and Danielle when they told me I had to talk to the team psychiatrist I was excited <laughs> because I, I I really was because I made it to professional football but I knew that something was wrong I was a shy little mm-hmm. quiet little kid I just I knew something was wrong I was like okay I'm good I get to talk to a psychiatrist for the first time I'm like who so okay I sit down in there and he says, okay, Mr. Holmes, he said, um, have you ever been physically, mentally, or sexually abused? And I hope I can say that. I'm sorry about the S yeah, word. Can. I got to be careful on you too. And I said, I said, yeah. And he sat back down. Yeah, he said, okay, tell me about it. Mm-hmm. And, I, and it was like, he opened the gate. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, my God. I walked out of the office, Danielle, and I looked around. And I said, what the hell am I doing in Dallas? Oh, yeah, I was... Sport, I was running from my life, man. That was another reason why I was so great at sports, being that's where I got my my pat on the back from. But yeah. it it kept me away from the trauma. Mm-hmm. And then I got to the top and I ain't had no place else to run. And then it's like, okay, we need to face what the, that's what did you call it before we start this show? The name of this show? My <laughs> trauma. It's yeah. like we need to you need to face this now, my brother. And I have faced Everything that my beautiful mind can let me recall, Danielle, the post-traumatic trauma, whatever you call it, that is what got me to this place of peace because I got to a place of understanding before I, um, while I was looking at those things that happened to me, not in the beginning, I wasn't at a place of understanding, but I am now at a place of understanding and I love looking at those things now because those were the things where the shyness came from, the insecurities. And when I can see a, uh, an, it, the exact moment, it's like, oh, shit, that's why you think you're shy. Or that's where you pick this up from. Now, that was the first part. Mm-hmm. I thought that once I realized all that, I was going to be able to let it go. It's like, uh-uh. <laughs> now you got to get rid of these damn habits. Now yep. you got you to gotta, you gotta work this shit out of you. 
Yep. So that's what I've been doing since 1997, Danielle, and I'm still doing it to this day. <laughs> wow. Clearing myself of my past, being able to look at it and see that this is where you picked up things from. And the whole goal in life is to clear yourself of all of this stuff and find you, man. And mm-hmm. just be you, a calm and an assertive person. That's what we're all supposed to be, calm and assertive people. Beautiful. So talk to me about, I mean, there's so much with what you just said. I want to take it back. Like, I think others can probably relate to, look, you, you perform in life, you excel, like you found football. And as you said, you just pushed and ran, not realizing like subconsciously running away from all of this trauma, you hit the pinnacle. And all of a sudden you realize things aren't okay in here. (laughs) Like there's something going on. (laughs) And it's like, you know, for myself, it was a car accident. Like I had a lot that I went through in my teenage years, et cetera. And I had this accident that stopped me in my tracks and said, you have to face this. Like you literally, you know, I think that I believe our higher selves are kind of orchestrating things to happen so that we reach this moment where everything falls away, everything falls apart. And literally then it starts to actually be able to fall together for you to become whole. And talk to me about some of the things that you found on your journey, because, you know, I've had my own journey of understanding and and work and, and looking through things. So talk to me about what you've done to support you. Okay. When I mentioned to you about me being enlightened when I was 12, there was something that woke up in my center, in my gut, in my chest, this, this, this sensational feeling. So whenever I played sports, I, I followed that on the field. You, you know, you're nervous before the game starts, and I can't wait to get that first little lick. And you get all that nervousness out, and then you get into that zone, or you get into that place where you are out of the way, and you're just in the moment. It's a beautiful place to be. And so... I followed that place on the field. I was great. Off the field, I became a follower. And I said to myself, okay, I want to walk around off the field like I'm on the field, that that gut feeling. So I have learned um, a lot about meditation. I, I got a book called The Book of Secrets from a guy named Osho. It's called The Book of Secrets, and it has thousands of meditations in it. It was 2004. And I would read through those uh, certain meditations, do certain ones. And to this day, I've been working on one so much that it's become second nature. And it's a very simple one. It's just breathing. <laughs> just let my breath hit the bottom of my stomach, Danielle. And it helped. I used to fidget a lot. And I, I was aware of that stuff. And I would catch myself. I'm talking about when I was up until I was nine. I mean, I started remembering, recalling this when I was 19. So now, Danielle, I'm at the point now to where I sense that if my if I start tapping my foot, it's like, huh, what you thinking about there, Clayton? <laughs> and then and then it lets me know where you relax. It's like, no, you your foot won't tap if you are relaxed. When, and when are you relaxed? When your breath hits the bottom of your stomach. So I walk around, I drive, I'm, I think about breathing, and, and and it's just second nature now. And that keeps me calm. And again, I'm not saying I'm this guy uh this peaceful i i i i i'm a human but i i'm at this point now to where it takes a lot to get me upset Danielle. it it really does take a lot to get me upset now and i owe that all to knowing when i'm calm it's like you can't be mad when you calm clayton breathe son <laughs> so that that that's what got me um and um opening my mind up to spirituality, Mm -hmm. honestly looking into every religion and saying, okay, I'm going to make my mind up which one of these religions I want to really join. It's going to be my choice now. And after looking, it's like, okay, I think everybody has a piece of this little puzzle. They're all saying some general thing. So I'm just going to go with the spirituality side of things and just work on myself. That's it. That's it. Oh, so, and that's just that practice has me to this point right now. Yeah. And I mean, you radiate like you have such a beautiful energy. And I think, you know, the body's always talking to us. I love that you're mm-hmm. realizing like, you know, your leg tapping like that's that's not normal. And it's some mm-hmm. it's like the body. It's the only way to speak is through sensation. <laughs> and right. and that is like helping <laughs> you see, hey, there's something blocked here. There's something missing. And when you breathe. It just, you know, everything's able to come, everything's able to move through. I found the same thing on my journey and it's been, uh, it's been beautiful. 
So talk to me about now Sia entering your world and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like it entered like a decade ago and then now it's come back around. So, so yes, it did. What, yes, what it role did. has that played uh, in, you know, in your, in your healing journey? Yes. Okay. Man, my hands feel so soft and good. Um, <laughs> I got involved with Sia, I think it was out probably six months or a year. I first got involved with it in Arizona. Um, I um, immediately noticed with the ASEA, I had my knees were really bothering me then. Mm -hmm. My knees and my skin and just the clarity is what I recall with the ASEA when I first got with it. Uh, I probably was using the ASEA for six months, probably. And then I ended up moving here to Washington State. And so I wasn't a big uh, salesperson again. I was in a in a search for self when I found the ASEA, and I couldn't uh, keep up with my ASEA. Heck, I was very. I had to find me a place to live and everything. So <laughs> I first got involved with the ASEA a decade ago. Here it is now. I'll be fifty five years old in August. Uh, I'm been going through this concussion protocol with the NFL, and I have a few little issues with that. And then my body, my back. I got hit by a car. Mm -hmm. On 12, 11, 15. So body pains and aches everywhere. I started, I met uh, um, Jay and his amazing wife, April. And to, Jay was going to help me with some social media stuff. And I found out that he was using the ASEA. And I was like, damn. So I gave him a call. I said, Jay, you, you, you ride with the ASEA? He's like, oh, yeah. And I told him my story. And man, before I know it, it was about a week. About a week goes by and Jay had some ASEA at my door. And I'm telling you, I remember my first, and again, everybody, this isn't, I'm not saying this is how it's going to work for you. This is how it's going to work for me. I have to contain my excitement right now. <laughs> okay. So he told me about the ASEA and I'm telling you, I don't know if it's because I was already, I had already taken it, but it's soon. And, and they didn't tell us to swish it in our mouth when I first took it. Uh -huh. And Jay told me this time, he said, swish it around in your mouth first. So I swished it around in my mouth. Hmm swallowed it and boom I am very sensitive to my body I it's very sensitive so when I swallowed it I I, I just felt that, well like a, like some kind of cleansing I, I just I, I could already kind of tell so the next day I, I get up the first thing that I noticed from the ASEA I go in the bathroom and I'm like damn damn my mouth feels my mouth feels weird I, I'm, it feels good and um again I'm not embarrassed to say this I my I my dentist retired, so I haven't had my teeth clean going on two years now, and I'm going to see the dentist on March 23rd. Can't <laughs> wait to see the dentist. But I, I, I've been swishing the, the, the ASEA. It makes me want to brush my teeth. I've been brushing my teeth like three times a day. <laughs> oh, my mouth feels absolutely amazing. My, my, um, my, which I'm gonna start first with my back. That was the biggest thing. My back was bothering me. About the, the second or third day, I noticed if for me, it felt like I was going through some type of adjustment. Like my right side kind of felt off or something. I was like, hey, you know what? I'm just gonna take me a walk. So I took me a little walk and it's like, okay, the more I started walking, it really felt like the more I was loosening up. Yeah. So uh, long story short with this, yeah, I just wanna mention one other main thing. But every day, I experienced something amazing when I wake up and it's been a month today. Every day I experience something amazing, clarity, um, calmness. And the main thing that I am experiencing that I have not experienced I, from anything that I've ever used, sleep. I close my eyes for at least five hours and stay asleep. And that is unheard of for me. That is unheard of. I thought it would never happen, but sleep, is the other thing that's happening to me. And then here's the other thing, Danielle, that I think maybe you can relate with me is um, this redox is, is, is cell signaling. That's where we all started from. Hmm. We, it was a simple cell the kaboom, that started the heartbeat. And I've already been living at that personal level of self, of this source in us god in us mm -hmm. and 
I'm 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 in a place where I'm in that divine place. Let me put it like that. I'm I'm in a beautiful divine place. It's I'm scaring myself right now because I am so in tune to what it is that I know about love, that I know about peace, that I know about a person's behavior. Mm -hmm. that, that, that I, I know all of these things. And then there's me, this, this me that I see, Danielle, that I know, I, I see the, I hate calling him a troublemaker, but the, the mind, I, 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 mind I it is a troublemaker. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I got this person. I, I see this part of me that I haven't completely let go of yet. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm, it's like, I don't want to, it's like, I, I, it's hard to say goodbye, <laughs> but I'm about to say goodbye to that person. And I see it and I, I see him. And it's like, yeah, buddy. Yeah, you've been over in that corner doing push-ups for a long time, haven't you? <laughs> Just waiting for me to slip up. And it's like, I, I, I oh God. And, and another thing that's probably keeping me, Danielle, this, this is emotional the stuff that I'm talking about. This, this, this comes with emotion. When you, when you, find out who you truly are man when you have that release it, it, it's it's emotional it, it's it's beautiful and i've and i've been working my way up to this final release i've already been doing it that's why i have this beautiful scar on my head that's why i got hit i got a glimpse of everything mm -hmm. i saw I, I i know it's like my life lined up danielle when i was when i got hit by the cars in a coma for three days it's like my life lined up, Danielle, and I looked down the entire line and I saw everything that made me. It's like, holy shit. And then I saw the real me. It's like all of us have this real, this true us self. And, and, and when we realize that we picked up things along the way of life that aren't really us and don't serve us, and when we let go of those things, you get down to that core you. That is the most beautiful thing on this earth, I feel like, is to truly find out who you are. Yeah. And I, that's what I'm going to do to the day I die. I I'll leave this body. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're here. I mean, they say, right, it's like letting go of who you are not so who you can can actually emerge. And it's like, mm. that mind is not who you are. And all those things from your past is not who you are. But it's like, is this true for you? Like for me, it's sort of been like these challenging points have, have been the things that have actually opened me up to ask deeper questions, to actually start looking and realizing, whoa, there's way more to any of this. <laughs> I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. it's uh, it's amazing what opens up. And how do you see, you know, Asiya fitting into this? Because for you, and I think myself too, it's why we've resonated so much together. Is like, like the the aspect of what the redox brings the system. Like it's great for the physical body and the discomfort to go away and the aches and the pains and whatever. But there's also like this deeper intuition. There's a feeling of like of just like this this glow that comes. And then along with that, for myself, and I believe for you too, and I want to speak to it, is this desire to expand that to the rest of humanity, to help mm. lift and shift the consciousness of others, the health of others, like to bring this out to the masses in a big way, you know? And yes. I think you said your timeline, right, brought you into who you are today. And in this moment where like, I feel like the real Clayton is like coming out fully. And now here is a Sia that's like aligning with with this mission so talk to me about how that is like an alignment with your life's purpose with what you're here to do like it's just it's beautiful to witness i i knew that i was eventually going to be doing what i'm supposed to be doing football was a stepping stone it gave me the microphone i'm a three-time super bowl champion with the dallas cowboys that gave me the microphone to do and and i was there is something that i'm going to have to to give to people and it's going to and, and it's going to be amazing and this is what it is there's three things but i'm going to talk about the asia and this is what it is this is native to our body i have blessed them how they did this but this is absolutely amazing and i just want to say to you of uh, people especially some people that may have tried it uh, and said that it doesn't work hey if you follow the directions i'm willing to bet that for people that said that it didn't work, I guarantee you, the, one of the main things that, you, that that's really important is water, family. What, I feel like what is doing, I feel like my body is being cleansed from the inside. I, feel, I, I truly feel like it's washing, dirty cells, just, it's clean. I feel clean. 
not just on the outside, but on the inside. And you may go through a little detox, a mm -hmm. headache or your bowel, bowel move. Hey, just know that you are being cleansed. Yes. Don't, you have to give this a honest try. And if uh, if the taste is a little weird again, know what why you're doing it and know that that taste is going to get better. And if your health is as important as you should recognize that it is, yep. especially if you have an ailment, you, you, you have to give this an honest try. So a seal has stepped into my life. I got my little bottle right here too. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I still feel like I'm dreaming because I'm like, this can't be true. Again, every day I wake up, I'm noticing something from my feet to my fingertips, my eyes. I just went to the eye doctor. I hadn't been in two years. She told me the next time I come back that I was going to have to have bifocals. Well, I was spraying the ASEA in my eyes for a week before I went there. And my and my eyes hadn't changed any. <laughs> they hadn't changed none. I was, he was like, I said, it's been, yeah, it's been two years. They, they hadn't changed any. So I'm, I'm, So this, this is just amazing. This is working at the cellular level. And I am going to get this into people's hands. And the thing that I'm struggling with right now I hate using that word struggle, is that um, I've been a part of a lot of companies that come across, and I haven't been across a bad company. It's not really not the, the product sometimes. It's a company, but all of the companies I've been with, they're a good company. I never looked at myself as like a salesperson. I didn't like going up to people. And so my thing is, the people that I want to talk to, about, I've already reached out to them about some other things. Mm -hmm. So it kind of threw me back into that that traumatic feeling of, oh, I can't sell, I can't do this. And just being aware that all of that stuff is happening and for me to uh, overcome that, that's where I'm at right now. But I'm gonna get me my people, Daniel. Um, Daniel and today is today. This It's been 30 days I haven't been on Facebook like religiously. And it's time for me today to uh, to start going back on more religiously. Because mm. it's been 30 days and I want to share what's been happening with me with yeah. this Asia. So, uh, yes. Well, this is I love you sharing that. Thank you for your honesty and like your, your authenticity. And like, I know what you have to bring to the world is so much of your own spiritual awakening. The things that you found that have supported you along the way that Asia is a piece of that. But I love what you just said. Cause I think a lot of people might say, well, like, of course, Clayton Holmes can share Asia, like, you know, three times Super Bowl champion, like he's the man, people are just going to listen to him. And I love that you were just so real and said, look, I've got my own demons in my mind, the struggles, right, of like, you know, my, my brain saying, well, people aren't going to listen to you, you've already talked about this, you know, blah, 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 blah. And that you're recognizing that it's sitting there, and you're taking action anyway. And you're saying, fine, that may all be true. But this is so unique and life has prepared me now to really be able to even appreciate the power of what the ASEA is. There's a reason it's now come back into my world. And, you know, for those of you listening, if you're thinking, well, I love ASEA, I'd like to share it also, but, you know, you have all these doubts. You're not the only one. We all have doubts. Okay, <laughs> <It's human laughs> right. Our mind wants to keep us safe. It wants to keep us, you know, small and kind of comfortable. And the moment you try to step out or bring something like you risk somebody judging you, like mm -hmm. rejecting you, saying something nasty about you. But the truth is like, you're connected to the vine. You are pure, you are whole. What somebody has to say doesn't matter. If this resonates with your being, like move with it. There's a reason it's come into your world. Um, That's right. Is there anything that you would like to, to end with? Any final thoughts? Um, you know, for those listening that uh, you'd like to just wrap this whole thing up with. Now, I would like to say you guys uh, stay tuned. I uh, have a Instagram account. I'm not on there as much and I need to be on there more and I will be. But if you want to find out more of what I'm doing, definitely follow me on um, uh, Instagram. And I'm definitely on Facebook also. And here's the other thing I want to say, Danielle, and one reason why. I haven't been on Facebook as much. And again, I'm, I'm going to try and keep this short. When I said, when you when you opened up, you said I was a true seeker. Well, Danielle, I truly have. So I when I say I have relearned everything, family, everything that I thought I knew, I relearned it. So I'm at a point in my life now, family, where I don't argue with people anymore. On Facebook, Facebook prepared me. <laughs> it taught me how to deal with, with, with social media. <laughs> 
Yes. So I have been practicing on Facebook and I have been dealing with, you know, trolls or people who just want to argue and family. I don't argue anymore. Either you want this or you don't. So if you look up any information about me, be careful. You, you, you're looking into a truth seeker. Yeah. So that may be something that offend you, but just know I stand for love, peace and understanding. Every question that I ask, every that topic that I bring up, it brings me closer to source, aka God. So I'm a, I'm I'm an open book. I look forward to um um this next phase of my life. So you guys stay tuned. I'm gonna start some podcasting. So uh, yes, this is this is a fun journey. I'm I'm gonna help heal some people. I love it. <laughs> Well, guys, I will put all of Clayton's information in the description. And if you're interested in joining him in this mission, joining myself, reach out. My phone number will be below. We can get you set up. We'll get you connected and uh, get you started on this ASEA journey. And absolutely stay in touch with Clayton to hear, you know, his insights, his takes. He's got a lot of wisdom uh, that has come through some intense things that he's been through. He's been asking some really hard questions, uh, questions that will cause you to kind of shake and question the reality that you've built for yourself. (laughs) Um, But I think it's important. I think it's really important and I appreciate the work you're doing. I appreciate you showing up so fully and everything you're doing internally, it's now showing externally, Clayton, and I wish you all the success. Thank you. I look forward to our next, and this is, this is just one of many we're going to do. Oh yeah. This is just oh, yeah. going to keep getting better with this, this year, without, especially with my body. So I look forward to our next sit down. Yeah, absolutely. Clayton. <laughs> all right. Until next time. All right. <laughs> Bye See everyone. Ya.